All right, here's solutions to number 34 off the GRE subject math test. Um, back to linear algebra. You're given this matrix here and ask which of the following statements is false. Uh, where to begin? The last row of A squared. I kind of like looking at that one. So A squared, uh, multiplying this matrix by itself. I'm putting that over here. The product of these two guys uh, will be a matrix. And it'll also be five by five. And I figure out this first entry here by taking this row and this column in there with dot product. Uh, so I can go filling these all out, but it doesn't ask me about any of those, it just asks me about the last row. So what would be in the last row? Well, it turns out it'd be 0, 0, 0, 0, 25, where this zero comes from is taking this column and multiplying, that's a row, not a column, that row times that column. How would that give me zeros? Well, zero times one is zero, zero times zero, 0 times 0, 0 times 0, 5 times 0. Add those all up, you end up with a 0. And that same thing happens when you take this row and multiply it by any other column, or any of the first four anyways, because the first four entries in a given column won't matter because they'll be getting multiplied by the first four entries in this row, which are all zeros. So the only possible way I can get a non-zero entry is if the fifth entry in a column is non-zero. And the fifth entry in every single one of these columns that will be multiplied by these fives, zero, 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 until I get to this last one here. I get to this last one here and I get zero, plus zero more, plus zero more, plus zero more, plus 25. That's this 25 right here. This is a true statement. Uh, a can be transformed into a five by five identity matrix by a series, by a sequence of elementary row operations. That's true. Uh, that seems like a lot of work by a five by five matrix. Well, it's actually not. Uh, and the reason it's not is because you can knock values out so easily. Uh, if I want to get rid of this 2, this 3, this 4, and this 5, I take this first row and subtract this row. Now these guys are all gone. Uh, if I want to get rid of this 3, 4, and 5, I just subtract this row. Now those guys are gone. I want to get rid of this 4 and 5, I subtract this row. I want to get rid of this 5, I subtract this row. And what's left is a 1 with zeros, a 2 with zeros, 3, 4, and 5 on the diagonal. And now I can just scale each of these, multiply this row by 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth. And what I get is exactly this five by five identity matrix. So that's a true statement as well. Um, that also gives you some information. The matrix is invertible. That's absolutely true. A matrix is invertible anytime it can be any, well, okay, there's lots of equivalent statements, but if I can transform it into the identity matrix by a sequence of elementary row operations, then the matrix is certainly invertible. In fact, I don't even need to be the identity matrix. I just need to be a triangular matrix. Um, I need there to not be any free variables. But we can see that when these all turn into, this is the way it's already written, I don't even need to do any transformations to see that this matrix is in fact invertible. Uh, another way you can figure out that this is invertible, suppose it's not, suppose this is false right here. It's not invertible. If it's not invertible, it's determined as zero. So if this is a false statement, then this is automatically a false statement. It asks you which of, which one is false? This can't possibly be false because it would guarantee that this one right here is false. Determine a five by five matrix, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, it's not for this specific matrix. What I'm gonna do here when I'm figuring out the determinant is I'm gonna pick on this first column here, which is mostly just zero. So to figure out the determinant of this five by five matrix, it's this one times the determinant of this four by four matrix plus this zero times the determinant of some other four by four matrix plus this zero times some determinant plus this zero. But since those are all zero, I don't have to worry about it. It's just this one times the determinant of this four by four matrix right here. And that determinant is just this two times the determinant of this matrix. And that determinant is this three times the determinant of this matrix. So, so far I have a one times a two times a three. And the determinant of this two by two matrix is four times five minus five times zero, which is zero. So the determinant of this guy is 20 times this three gives me 60, times this two gives me 120. The determinant of this matrix is in fact 120. Um, one times five factorial, fine. Uh, so I guess this is my answer, done. Uh, let's see, this is getting into, this looks like eigenvalues and vectors. If I have a vector um, and I take my matrix A, does it tell me, yep, this is A here, and multiply it by that vector, and I get for my answer exactly that, so not quite, it's an eigenvector with an eigenvalue of one, I guess is what's going on here. If this is true, 
then x must be equal to zero. In other words, one is not an eigenvalue of this matrix. Uh, well, the easiest way to figure this out is see what happens. This is one and eigenvalue, question mark. Well, to figure out if it's an eigenvalue, uh, take this matrix and subtract one times the identity matrix. So a minus one i would be equal to zero, two, three, four, five, zero, one, three, four, five, zero, zero, two, four, five, zero, 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 three, five, and zero, 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 four. Okay, so now I look at this matrix here, and if there are non-trivial solutions to the modulus matrix represented by this guy. In other words, if there is a vector that I can put out here that I multiply it by this matrix, I get zero as my answer, and that vector is not just all zeros, uh, then what that tells me is that one is in fact an eigenvalue. And there is, how do I know that? Well, I have a free variable. And I have a free variable, so that means there's a solution to the homogeneous matrix represented by this guy that's not uh, a non-trivial solution. So I have a non-trivial solution, that means that one is an eigenvalue, yes. So if one is an eigenvalue, that means that there is a solution to this guy where x does not equal zero. Um, one an eigenvalue, yes, so statement is false. Uh, so really you didn't even have to prove that. Once you knew that all the others were true, you knew this must be your answer. But I like to check them, I like to talk myself through why these are false if I have time to do so. So that's why this guy's false.